go again back into the museum. And this time around, we are going through as much of the top floor as we can. <laughs> select a game from the register. Well, there's only one here for us to select. <laughs> yeah, we're really getting the trippy music now. Now, I'm not the only person who likes this particular bunch of music. I know for a fact that uh, the person who came up with the podcast into the score, Ken Lee Christofferson, he loves this piece. And he loves the music, loves this game, to be honest. And now we enter the planetarium. The exhibit devoted to mysteries of space. And. Of course, there's Nick Zoopy. But we need to start this right. Where is that button? Now, where would the Zoopy have been? Ah, I think I see where the Zoopy would have been. There. Uh, no, I think the button is actually on the other side. There it is. Since 1947, when American pilot Kenneth Arnold described what he saw as, they flew like a saucer would if you skipped it across the water, man has reported thousands of UFOs. Hysteria? Then why do we find flying saucers creeping into prehistoric cave paintings 7,000 years old? And giant Nazca markings in the deserts of Peru that can only be seen from thousands of feet in the air? As you investigate further, you'll discover we are not alone. You know, I believe it was Arthur C. Clarke he even said that there are two possibilities about life in the universe. That we are not alone, or that we are alone, and each of them is frightening. Ah, uh, now. Coincidence or extraterrestrial visits. These pictographs found in civilizations having no interaction with each other look extraordinarily similar. One is led to believe that these ancient civilizations communicated with beings from other planets. Ancient writing found at the sites suggests that when the pictographs are properly aligned, the visitors will return. Hmm. And it... Oh! There's a camera here! something. Ah, and we have a puzzle here. Nazca Plains, Peru. Uzbekistan, Soviet Union. Ohinyo Daro, Pakistan. Chang on China. Now this is a little puzzle. And I'm gonna go and Care to refresh your memory? Always. Let's see, where was it? Museum of the Mythology of the Stars? No, I don't think it was this, that one. In search of the un of the unexplained. Ah, there we are. Sun. That one and that one. 
Now, ideal, we would write these down or make our best at a similar drawing. Once you get one of them locked in, they get into that form. this way because ah spaceships on the left that star setup is on the right and oh the spiky helmet okay <laughs> let's see Okay. As early as 300 BC, 
Heraclides of Pontus proposed that the planets revolved around the sun. Across the sea, Mayan Indians built temples aligned with Venus. Why then did modern man not know of the planet's orbits until 1700 AD? One theory is that, is that aliens from another system did not choose to share this with modern civilizations. And if we look up here, now that is beautiful, isn't it? Okay, time to move on. Not much it seems in this room. Man creates in order to improve his existence. However, many of man's early inventions became lost. During the Dark Ages, an inventor whose creation seemed a little too ingenious could be accused of collaborating with Satan and consequently burned at the stake. Or worse. Yep. It was a dark time in human history. Let's see, what do we have in here? A sickle. Is there anything in this box? Not that I can tell. Now, this is to man's inventive talents, which is sometimes considered a mystery. Mayan temple. But, the entrance to the secret passageway is right here onto the third floor. We'll leave that be for right now. What do we got here? You know, I'm not entirely sure what that is. And in here? Hey! An axe. And what do we have here? Louis Garcon's alchemy alchemical machine. Hmm. Oh, we have another puzzle. Now, this one's a tricky one. We have nine pieces that we're going to have to get into place. When I first did this one, I think I pretty much did it freehand. Trial and error. And part of the trick is you have to find the right kinds of pieces that go in each spot. For example... This piece could go right here. But not this piece. Blue, yellow, pink, green. That piece could go in. That one couldn't. Yellow, pink. That one could. That one can't. can't. That one can't. Mm -mm. So the question becomes, can they fit in? As long as you put in a piece that goes in the right spot, it doesn't have a conniption. Now, 
And this one can be very tricky and very time consuming. Because you literally have to know each one proper. So let's see here. Uh, I'm either two. <clears throat> find the right spot. <laughs> That's done. It will reopen and give us uh, the two snakes. So what one was that? Helps when you root them down long ago. Two snakes, two snakes, three. Well, 
that's the sand one. Okay. Just gonna look at that real quick. That's how it looks. They are not happy. Okay. And our next room. Man's inhumanity to man. Man has taken it upon himself to penalize his fellow man for every conceivable offense, many trivial. Historically, singing insulting songs in Rome, injuring a cat in Egypt, and even selling bad beer in Babylon could bring the death penalty. Yeah, it was no joke. Okay. A pendulum. Being buried alive, I believe. Nice and cheery, isn't it? I feel your pain. Thank you, Elvis. I feel your pain. Shackles. There you have the rack. Hey, that image looks familiar. The stocks. And very noble. Guillotine. Prior to the French Revolution, beheading was the death sentence of choice for the upper class. Thanks to the invention of the guillotine, decapitation was also made available to commoners. Dr. Guillotine said that the victim of the, this machine does not suffer, but feels nothing more than a slight chill on his neck. Well, at least he doesn't work right now. And what we have. Historically, the search for the perfect pang was a heated topic. Arguments ranged, raged over where on the neck to put the noose, how thick the rope should be, and especially how far the body should drop. Once the trapdoor was sprung, the debate came down to inches. It seems that 14 feet 5 inches was ideal until people were decapitated as they dropped, their heads severed by the rope. The drop in this exhibit, however, is only 10 feet. Let's go check it out. Because there's something down here. Hmm, can't open it set right. Okay. It says 10 feet. This machine works in inches. Hmm. I think we picked the right one. Yeah, that was it. And we have another exubula, hot lid, or whatever you want to call it. Hmm, the feathered dragon or something? Let's see, and hmm. What is that? That's the wax one. So let's see. Gallows exhibit. Let's 
get that back. Alright, let's get out of there and down. electric chair. Remember I said you could put control where some exupy show up? The electric exupy can show up right there. However, we're not going to give him the option to attack us there. Uh, you know what? I think for now, I'm going to call it bits. But we will enter the puzzle room area which will be the last part, and it's a three-parter, or four-parter, however you want to look at it. Okay, and so, until next time. Well, this is a little bit better, the music is a little bit better than what's in the other room. So until next time, we will have, we'll save our game, and until next time, we will then take care of the puzzle rooms. Huh? Take care. Goodbye.